Hey guys, welcome back to video number three of the Excel Human Resource Salary Dashboard with bradagger.com. Today we're looking at how to set up our slicers in Excel for our final dashboard. So what we're going to do first is we're going to actually create the new tab on our worksheet and we're going to actually name that dashboard. So we'll change that. Next thing we'll do is I'm just going to hit Alt and you'll see that brings me up into the header or into the quick access ribbon. We're going to type W and then I'm going to type VG. That's going to remove all the grid lines. Again, that is language specific depending on what version of Excel you're using. So if uh, you are using a Spanish version, for example, it's going to be a little bit different in terms of what keys you're going to use. In our case, it was uh, Alt W VG for the English language. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to head back over to uh, the calculations tab and we can actually do that just by hitting control page up. And that'll bring us to back to the calculation spreadsheet. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to select any cell within my first pivot table. And we're going to head over to the analyze, uh, yeah, the analyze tab. Was it the analyze tab? Yes, it is. So over in the filter section here, you'll see that there is insert slicer. We're going to insert a slicer. And what we're going to do is we're going to select country name because we're going to have two different uh, filters on our pivot table using slicers. We're going to have country name and we'll also have department name. So I'm going to select country name. I'm going to hit OK. And now you see that that's actually been generated. We have the country name associated to the pivot table. So if I were to select Brazil right now, you'll see that that changes for that pivot table. If I select Canada, our top three will change based on the country that we select. Excellent. So you'll notice that the bottom three salaried employees doesn't change, the employee count will not change, the cumulative salary won't change, as well as the average salary is not changing. So in order to do that and to make sure that all of them are going to change, we're going to change the report connections that's going to be found up in the slicer tool options. Over on the left hand side you'll see the report connections. We will click on report connections and we're going to select the rest of our pivot tables. So here's the listing of all of our pivot tables. I can expand this. So you see average salary, bottom three salary, cumulative salary, and the employee count. So all we're going to do is select all four other pivot table connections. We're going to hit OK. And now what will happen is you'll see that all of these are going to update based on my selection. So if I click on Canada, I can open this up a little bit by double clicking. Um, you'll see employee counts 23 in Canada. We've got a cumulative salary of 2.696 million. And then we also have uh, the average salary is around 117,000. And then you'll see that our bottom three salary is John Smith, Alice Teal, Jennifer Terrence. Now, if we remove this filter completely, you'll see that everything is going to change based on uh, no filter whatsoever. So we're including all countries. So there it is. You'll see that the top salary has changed to 3.9 million. You see that all the employee counts have changed. The next thing we're going to do is we want to add a department name slicer. So to do that, I'm just going to select back within our uh, top three salaried, salaried employees pivot table. Head back over to Analyze. We're going to go Insert. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the department name. I'll click OK. Now again, this pivot table is only going, or this pivot table slicer is only going to be associated to the top three salaried employees. So again, in order to make it available to all of the report connections or to have an effect on all of our pivot tables, we're going to have to update the report connections. So we'll go to report connections. We're going to select employee count, cum salary, bottom salary, and average salary pivot tables. Excellent. So now we have all of those selected. So if we were to select finance, you'll notice that we only have finance people in Canada. Anything that's grayed out in a slicer means that there is no records or there are no records available for the current filter that's selected. Uh, and then again, you'll see that we have four people in finance in Canada. And you'll also see how they rank by top to bottom. So we're going to clear that filter now. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab both of these filters. We're going to cut them. And we're going to bring them over to our dashboard tab. And all I'm going to do is hit paste. And we're going to paste both the pivot table slicers as they look on the current sheet. Okay, so we've got both of those pivot table slicers. If we want to change 
the colors of the pivot table slicers. All we need to do is pop over to the options and what we'll do is we're going to select a new slicer. So actually, you know what, I'm going to go duplicate one of the slicers that I like. So in this case, I'm going to duplicate this slicer here, which I, I like having this dark color in there. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is we see that this is the duplicate of the, no, that actually isn't the duplicate. If we scroll up, did I duplicate it? Hang on a second. No, I did not. So I'm going to click duplicate. Okay. So now when I hit, when I click duplicate, it's actually going to bring up this modify uh, slicer style. So I'm going to change this to be custom slicer style. Perfect. Now we can, if we go up to the top, you'll see that that custom slicer style is here. I'm going to go modify. And now what I'm going to do is change all of these options the way they look and appear based on the colors that I want for my dashboard. So if I go to format, I'm going to want the text to display in agency FB. I think I went by it. There it is. And we want that to be in 12 font. So we'll see that the border style is in a blue right now. I can change that to whatever color I prefer. Personally, I like this color green, which matches my website. So I'll just go 117, 175, 59. I can change that and then we can change the outline of that just by clicking and adding on the border. I then can go to the fill option and on the fill effects, this is for the whole slicer. I'm just going to leave it blank as is and display it as is. So the next one we'll hit is the header. We're going to format font, same thing, agency FB, we'll go 12, leave the color as is. In this case, there's just a You'll notice that the color that I added is, is now here, but there's only a border on the bottom. So we'll just select that because we're going to match it. Okay. So you'll see over on the left what the preview looks like. So selected items with data. This one here, we're going to go my color green for the box out outline, go to font, change it to agency FB and we'll change the font size again. as is it's going to stay in white as it has it here oh i want to go back into that one so this one's going to format the items that have data associated to them we're going to go over to fill i'm going to go more colors again this is 17 175 59 perfect so again now you'll see that that's changed for me now the light blue i also want to change so selected item with no data what does this one look like? It's got a light blue in this case for the pattern. We're going to go fill effects. I don't want fill effects. We're going to go to colors. Unfortunately, we have to type this every time for some reason in this section. 175, 59. Okay, we'll go to border. Select the same thing. We'll change our border on this one. And the font, agency FB. You know what I think what I want to do is we're going to change the fill on this one to be a lighter green that's what I'm looking for and then we'll just change the font to be the color of our cell for the selected items okay so you'll see that that updated the rest of them are okay all I'm going to do with the rest of them is just update the actual font on them. Keep on skipping right past this one. Agency FB, we'll go to 12. Okay. Same thing for this. Twelve. Format. I know this is tedious and boring, but we're just gonna get through this so that I can show you what we get as a final result. 
and finally we'll get agency FB on this one. Perfect. So now we have the look and feel that we want for our um, slicers. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to get this same color and pattern and uh, font all associated to this current slicer to be applied to the other slicer. And you'll see that we have up in the top, we've now got this new slicer that we've created, which is called the custom slicer style, as you see there when I hover over it. So we'll just select the country name. I'm going to select that slicer style. And there you have it. So now we've updated these two slicers to match our dashboard colors. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to add a background in here for our slicers. This is where our formatting style is going to be or this is where our, our uh, filters and controls are going to be for the dashboard. So I'm going to go insert. We'll just add a box here. So what we can do with this is now just send it back. Just click that guy. It'll send it to the very back. If we go to drawing tools now up in the top quick access ribbon, we can go to shape fill. And I'm going to change the fill to a different color that I enjoy. And that's associated again to my website, 48, 44, and 44. So that updated that. We'll change the outline to match that. You'll see that that color becomes available in recent colors again. Cool. So now we have both of those. I'm going to tighten both of these up. Excuse me. And we'll do this one to match the same size here. Perfect. So now we got both of those slicers set up. Try and match the size. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And we can drag these down a little bit more. Okay, so those are dragged down now. The next thing I'm going to do is add another box that's going to be clear and see-through. I can just copy this guy and go control C and then control V. That just makes a copy of that square and box shape that we just finished creating. Head over to format, shape fill. In this case, we're going to put no fill, shape outline, no fill. And we'll change our text to be our agency FB that I've been using for the pivot table slicers. I've scrolled by it once again. Change this to uh, 24, let's say. Drag this over. Ooh. Let's go like this for a sec, just to find our or our new box. There it is. Okay, so let's just add text here. I'm going to change the color just for a sec so I can see it. And we'll right click, go edit text, and we're going to call this, uh, how did I call this before? Format. And I better confirm. Let's open up our other spreadsheet that I have for the finished dashboard. So we called that top slash bottom three dashboard filter. I'm just going to copy this text. Can minimize that. Okay, so that's in there. Again, it looks like it updated based on uh, back to the default text. So I'll just change it to agency FB. We'll change it to 18. font size and in a second what I'll do is change the format of the box to be no fill again okay so we can drag these up to the top excellent so now we have that available to us we're just gonna select each of the items that are associated to this here. And what we're going to do is group those all together as one. Perfect. So now you'll see that we can move this around and kind of get it to format and display as we want to see it. The next thing that I'd like to do really quickly before we finish up this tutorial is I want to change on here some of the slicer settings that we have available. 
Down at the very bottom here, you see show items deleted from the data source. It is always checked and defaulted to yes or true, I guess. And I'm going to deselect that because what happens is if you delete an item from your pivot table or from your original data set and then refresh your pivot table, it is not going to show. It's going to basically show as blank on our in our slicer, I should say. So we're going to just take that option off. Slicer settings. We'll go back deselect that show items deleted from data source on this one as well and you'll see there's a couple different things that you can see if, if you wanted to remove the headers you could do that as well for the slicer if you want to show items with no data last uh, visually indicate items with no data you can have all of these selected and you can also say hide items with no data so it would show nothing at all if there was no data within um, the criteria the filter that we've selected we're going to leave all those as is and by default so we're just going to click OK so we can do one final test just to pop over to our calculations tab. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to look at how we set up the rest of the dashboard to uh, display and show what we're selecting based on our filter criteria. But in this case, I'm just going to show you what happens in the calculation tab in our pivot tables. So if I select Canada, you'll go back over to the calculation tab. You'll see that it's updated that information. So if we notice that you see John Tim here as your employee for top salaried, we've got 23 employees. Let's go over to dashboard. If we were to select Brazil, or let's select United States, for example, head back over to calculations, you'll see that all that information has changed based on what we've selected on our slicer. So that's it for today, guys. Sorry, it was a little long, a little tedious. And I also wanted to show you guys how we set up a custom slicer style. So we've done that. We've gone over how to do the uh, change some of the default slicer settings. And we've also looked at uh, formatting. So Tomorrow we're going to be looking at setting up the rest of the dashboard and how to set up all of these using name ranges, using these top salary name ranges, the top names, as well as each of these individual name ranges in our final dashboard to get everything to display in one spot on our final dashboard. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.